Again, take a minute to read this problem. I'd like to demonstrate this problem by a picture with buckets. So what I'd like you to picture, I've got window cleaner here, so let's talk about buckets. I've got one called sparkling clean window cleaner. Uh, to save some space, I'm going to let that represent X. Um, and it'll be uh, the number of ounces, number of ounces of sparkling clean. And then I've got sunstreak window cleaner. And so I'm going to let that be the letter Y, the number of ounces of sunstreak. But what I'd like you to see really here in terms of, of these buckets is um, I want to take the two types of window cleaners, sparkling clean window cleaner, which is 12% alcohol, and sunstreak window cleaner, which is 30% alcohol. And I want to know how much of each of those should be used to make, to put together, to equal into a big bucket. So I'm going to dump this one in and dump this one in to make 90 ounces, 90 ounces in this bucket of a cleaner that is 20% um, percent alcohol. Let's go back here again. The sparkling cleaner, which is going to be X, is a 12% solution. And the sunstreak window cleaner, which is going to be Y, is a 30% solution. Again, I want to make 90 ounces of a 20% solution. So to understand these kind of mixture problems, one of your best things that you can do is understand that you've got to use something weaker with something stronger to create something that's in between those two. So if you're wondering where these percentages go in this picture, take the weak mixture and, and add the strong mixture to it to get the cumulative mixture. Now they tell us that in the problem, but I, I think that might help you a little bit. And then I'd still wish that you would go to this thought. It's, uh, let's, let's write our first statement, which our, is our total statement, and that's right across the top here of this, this picture here. This x plus y equals 90. I have x ounces of sparkling cleaner and y ounces of the sunstreak window cleaner for a total of 90 ounces. So we'll start with that. What I'm calling the value statement isn't really a value statement. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the percentages out of these buckets. So I'm going to pull 12% out of the bucket called X, and I'm going to pull 30% out of the bucket called Y. And if I do that, if I'm pulling the pure um, alcohol out of these buckets, then I have to pull the 20% of the 90. I have to pull the 20% of the 90. That's what most people forget to do, is to do this. So that value right there is 18. Please do that. That's, that's very, very important. I'm not sure, um, I think I'll try to get this whole problem solved. I'm going to have to actually take the problem off of the screen in order for us to do that. So take one last quick look at that, and I'm going to pull the problem. And I'm even going to, I'm going to take the buckets off now, I'm afraid. And so um, what I would like to suggest, if you're interested, um, I think I'll even move over here. If you'd like to take this equation right here, 0.12x, if you would just like to call it 12x, I've multiplied by 100, I've moved two places. Then you have to move this two places, so that would be 30y. And the 18, you have to move the decimal place two places also. So if you choose to do this, do it to both sides of the equation, I multiplied the whole equation by 100. If you do that, I guess I actually haven't done this this way. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can do this number crunching in my head. Um, since I haven't done it prior. Uh, you could also take this, um, this top equation and solve this one by elimination instead of substitution. While you could say y is equal to 90 minus x, you could move the x over here. Another thing that would be pretty easy for me to do in my head, I can multiply by 30 in my head pretty easy. 12 is a little bit harder. So I'm going to multiply this whole statement by a negative 30. So I'll have a negative 30x, a minus 30y, and a negative um, 2700. And I'm going to solve this system by elimination. So what I'll have right here is a negative 18x, 
the y terms disappear. And then when I um, combine those two, I'll get a negative 900. And I'm going to peak. And I found out that x is equal to 50. So I'm fairly certain that 18 into 900 is, um, is 50. Negative divided by negative. You know, once I know that x is equal to 50, look at this original statement right here. There's 90 ounces in total when I dump that, those into those buckets. So if x is 50, then doesn't y just have to be 40 ounces of their appropriate, and let's see, um, x was uh, our 12% cleaner, and y was our 30% cleaner, and I am making an effort here to remember to describe my answers. And finally, one last thing that I, I could do, I do know that the sum is equal to 90. I could take my calculator again and check that second statement. Let's see if I can get it lined up here okay. Um, let's see, how about right there? And I could take, and I know this is kind of not real clear, 0.12, 12% of 50. And add to that 30% of uh, y, which is 40. And that is the pure, um, uh, oh, I forgot what it was, alcohol. Um, I, I'm taking this statement, and I wanted to know if that equals the 20% times 90. You can't see that, I see. Um, and it sure does. The 12% of 50 plus this 30% of 40 does indeed equal this. 18 here. So it was my checking of my second equation to see how I did. This is called the mixture problem. I hope I've helped with those percentage issues and, and uh, making sure to recognize that the right side has to be multiplied by the percentage as well.